Hello and welcome back to Read Becca. It's been another week. We somehow survived. It was a very long one for me. So um, this is my, my chatty catch up on everything that I read this week and everything I'm currently reading. So let's dive right in. I did finish a couple things. Woohoo! Uh, the first one was um, on audio, very fitting for my March Mystery Madness um, selections. Uh, and the prompt, I, I picked up All the Queen's Men by S.J. Bennett. And this is the second in the Her Majesty Invest Her Majesty the Queen Investigates series. Uh, and I really enjoyed it, but it was not as cozy as I had expected. So the first one was very playful and lighthearted, and despite the murder. <laughs> um, and this one was not. This was really a lot heavier, um, very subdued, and it's it takes place before the pandemic. So that that was good. But it's set in 2016, um, in the summer, when there was a lot going on. So it's kind of background because the Queen can't really have an opinion. She has to serve her people however you know they decide, really, um, is kind of her view. But Brexit is, is going on. Um, and the US uh, presidential race between Clinton and Trump is going on. And so those things are there in the background. And that, that definitely makes it a lot heavier. Um, her thinking about losing her dogs um, as, as she's aging and, and not continuing to breed her dogs. You know, there isn't any actual uh, uh, animal death in here, but but she's thinking about the recent death of one of her corgis. And so, yeah, that made it a lot heavier than I was expecting. Um, in terms of the, the plotting, this had the same wit and charm to it, but again, lacking that really playful humor. And the, the plot of this one is that the queen, because she's sharp as a tack, uh, notices a painting that she's quite sure is hers in another location, um, not where it should be, um, uh, as if, you know, someone has given it away to this other place. And she's, she's quite sure that that's not the case. And so she has this wonderful assistant in, in both series, Rosie, who is former military, very competent, and has become kind of the queen's hands and feet in these investigations. And so the queen kind of tasks Rosie to go look into this painting situation. And so there's an art investigation there. But there are also two other major elements. Of course, there's a murder, <laughs> or a body, I should say. Um, everybody suspects it's not murder initially and of course the queen kind of knows better and starts looking into it uh and then there is harassment going on of the women in the palace staff and um it's anonymous and they're getting these threatening letters and kind of no one knows what's going on it's increasingly becoming more and more ominous and so naturally all of this somehow ties together because the queen knows best and is able to, to look into all of this. And so we have these multiple threads going on. It was really um, compelling to, to read through and find out how the heck this is all going to tie up. And as usual, the queen being this underestimated elderly lady, she is able to bend people's ears and, and plant information to lead them in the right direction. Um, because she always has kind of this, this web of well, she's like a mastermind sort, you know, Sherlockian for sure, uh, who who knows more of the big picture than everyone else seems to. And so she's maneuvering all these people to get at solving everything. And it's just so brilliant. In both books, the, the scene closes out with her sitting there listening to the investigator um, from, from the police tell her everything that's happened, even though, you know, she, of course, is the one who <laughs> solved it all. And it's just brilliant. It's, it's really wonderful. So she is such a, a great character, like having this, this elderly lady who is um, just witty and charming and um, very delightful, but so, so smart. Just all of this experience and wisdom that she's gotten over her life really shines in, in this series. So um, I, I, totally enjoy this series and, and we'll definitely continue to read it. So not quite what I was what I was expecting though. So I did want to pick up a cozy after this. Um, I was looking for any sort of series on audio um, since I now have a free audio slot. Uh, and my, my um, series that I have in progress, there, none of them are available on audio. So I decided to pick up the first in a, a new series to me. Um, Cleo Coyle is a really well-known cozy mystery author as far as I know. So I picked up um, on What Grounds, the first in the Coffee House mystery 
series and um, I have not read any of Coyle's work before so I'm looking forward to getting into that this week. Then I read one I don't really have a ton to say about, The Hamster Princess, um, Giant Trouble. This is the fourth book in the Hamster Princess series by Ursula Vernon and um, it has really adorable illustrations if I can find one. Uh, but this pretty much followed expected story beats. It's really like the uh, Jack and the Beanstalk story, but you know, nothing terribly unexpected. Um, there's the, the harp is a harpster, a half hamster, a half harp. Um, there, the goose just lays regular eggs that the giant, who is a giant rabbit, <laughs> eats. And that, that seems a little odd because not only do they eat the eggs, uh, they supposedly also eat people, which I'm pretty sure rabbits are like obligate herbivores, aren't they? <laughs> I don't know. But like suspension of disbelief is okay here. Um, yeah, so it is, it's very, very cute and didn't blow me away. This was probably the least interesting of the series, but um, Vernon's writing is so adorable and it it really has a tone to it that the, the sense of humor you really get, I think, more if you're an adult than a kid, maybe. Uh, and Harriet, the hamster princess, is such an independent girl, like really strong and she she loves being independent and um, kind of being out on her own. So like, she's, she happens to be camping at the beginning of this um, when the beanstalk grows overnight just because she was out cliff diving. <laughs> and, you know, like, yeah, she, she is brilliant fun. And all of the other side characters around her, her uh, riding battle quail, Mumphrey, who she takes everywhere with her, is is absolutely great. I love it. So so that was a really fun, entertaining one. I, I needed that for my middle grade March reading. And then all these obligations. Uh, Booktube Prize. I finished my final Booktube Prize book, The Passenger by Ulrich Alexander Boskowitz and translated by Philip Thame. Um, I can't say anything about this, but I am so glad to be done with book two prize for this round. Um, I'm, I'm sitting out the next round, but I'm still mulling over my rankings. I don't have those in yet, so I will be getting those in this weekend for sure. And really glad to be done with that. And then that means I'm released of the shackles of book two prize. I'm going to be really jumping into the stuff that uh, I saved as my reward, <laughs> some light fluffy stuff now that I'm finished, and then uh, stuff that I had in progress and has been kind of lingering on my in progress very, very slowly. Uh, I have The Fall of Babel by uh, Josiah Bancroft, the fourth in the Books of Babel series. So I am about 400 pages into this. <laughs> it's been hanging around because the past two months I've been so focused on Booktube Prize, but I've barely been chipping away at this. So I really would like to finish this in the next couple weeks because I'm getting kind of behind on my my tomes goal and so I want to finish this and get into another tome and I mean that's not not a big deal for sure it's just I, I would love to keep things moving on that so in watching stuff I have continued down the rabbit hole of reality tv and <laughs> just binging way too much I am continuing on with Amazing Race and I'm up to season seven which has been very fun because I had forgotten that Rob and Amber from Survivor, um, I was into Survivor for the first couple seasons um, very much so when it was on. And uh, they are on this current season of Amazing Race and they are very fun because they're like really good natured about everything but they're very into the game aspects. They, they were on Survivor as well. And so they're a little bit slimy but <laughs> it's entertaining <laughs> for sure. Um, then I also binged through Queer Eye Germany, which is cool because uh, the guys are like younger, more flamboyant for sure, a little louder um, than the US version. And they have a hairstylist who is very non-gender conforming, like uh, Jonathan Venice. And they also have a lifestyle coach who is, as far as we see, extremely femme. Um, which is kind of representation we haven't seen in the US version. So I really enjoyed that, that they kind of went outside of, you know, filling those specific like check boxes or anything. Like they went with a very diverse group. Um, so it, it was just a delightful show as always. Um, they captured that complete like supportive, encouraging um, environment that the show creates for people. And I, I enjoyed it so much. Um, 
in terms of my week, geez, uh, I had insane, insane days uh, this week. So Monday, Tuesday, I worked like 12 to 14 hours. Um, things were, were really broken. <laughs> so that always means crazy. Um, I kind of randomly got a bonus though, which was like, I shouldn't be surprised. And, and clearly I'm showing my privilege here that I don't have to be like monitoring every, you know, penny and knowing exactly when my bonuses are coming. Like I should know it's every spring, <laughs> but I'm lucky to work for a company where I do get a bonus pretty much every year um, and raises, even if they were, they're not making up with, keeping up with inflation right now. Um, but so, so that was really, really great and not expected as far as my planning. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to for sure buy uh, a cat wheel. I have been wanting one for a really long time and they're, they're expensive. Like they're not like massively expensive, but it's like a piece of furniture basically. And so I've been wanting one for a long time. Like my cat really needs one. So I'm going to, I'm going to splurge and, and use my bonus to buy that. Um, I also like, because the stress was so high this week, like I'm so tired, I think. Um, I know I mentioned, I think last week that I was feeling tired. I really just feel like taking a nap every day. And so my days at work were, were really long and I don't think I have anything going on health wise really, but I'm just feeling so drained. I want to take a nap every day. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, otherwise like health wise, I had gotten some dental work last year. December, um, November, something like that. And that part of that included getting a bone graft and like a membrane, which is like new gums basically. Um, but the bone graft, so like the bones keep growing and stick out through the gum. So the gum has not been closing until just finally this past week it did. It was all closed over. And that is like an immense <laughs> improvement because having the little bones sticking out was basically almost as bad as having stitches for a couple months was. It's really, really annoying. So my mouth is feeling immensely, immensely better this week. Other stuff this week was like health wise again with the pets. They were not doing great. So my foster cat has chronic kidney disease. And um, so he has occasional kind of flare ups where he just will really de degrade and not be doing well. And so we had one of those. And very often when that happens, it's because they have a UTI or an infection of some sort. And so fortunately, I already had some uh, of his antibiotics remaining from the last time around. They gave me too much before we could get into the vet. And so we, we were able to just get him started on antibiotics right away. And he turned around within about a day, but it was like overnight him throwing up multiple times and me being up every couple hours with him and him really just laying around flopped all day long. So that was tough. And then my dog was feeling sick as well. And so I was up a whole bunch with him going out all night. So that might be why I'm tired, but it's been multiple days. I shouldn't, I shouldn't still be feeling tired. Um, and then uh, I, I did get kind of a recharge yesterday, but it hasn't helped my, <laughs> it's not helped my energy level at all. Um, I went to a John Scalzi um, author event at the library. They finally have returned to doing in-person author events. So that's really exciting. Um, I was a little nervous about it. It ended up being much, much smaller than I expected. Um, they clear out the, the whole main floor of headquarters to do these author events usually, and that means a couple hundred people if it's in there. And it was, it was not, it was much smaller. Um, everybody that showed up was clearly a massive nerd. <laughs> so uh, there were a lot of like D&D &D and, and gaming and just general nerdy shirts in the audience. And um, everybody was clearly really a fan and it was the exact right sort of event to be going back for because everybody was laughing and having a great time. Um, Scalzi is very funny. If you don't know, he's a, a sci-fi author who writes really like action-packed adventure um, humorous. And so it was, it was the perfect return to in-person events. This is the first thing I've gone to, um, being back indoors inside with a group of people really, or a, a large group of people. Um, and I think this was like the, the crowd energy was one you want to be there for. Like you could enjoy this on Zoom, but not in the same way where everybody that's there is kind of feeding off of each other. So it was just 
a delight to be able to do that finally. Um, the last time that they tried to start doing author events again in person was in January after there was kind of a, a decrease in, in spread in December, it started going back up in January, right, as they were about to start. So the first one I was supposed to go to, they ended up having to cancel and go back to Zoom um, because of that. So, so I was a little nervous about this. And I think a lot of people in the crowd were having conversations as well, saying it was their first time back out in public and, you know, things like that. So, so yeah. I think everybody was was great though it was a fully masked event so everyone was super respectful and, and wonderful so which you can expect from library patrons of course so i enjoyed that so much and it, it definitely um made me like feel very recharged emotionally like i have for sure been kind of down in a hole for the past couple weeks it's been really stressful and um just just generally down and this definitely brought things way up for me. So it was great, great to be able to do. So I think that's it for my week. Um, recommendations are a bit all over the place this week. <laughs> uh, the first one, like if you somehow have missed this, uh, I'm not gonna post a link or anything because they're all over the place, but it went viral. Um, Senator Berg from Kentucky, go look up the video of her just ripping into anti-science um, legislation um, in her state. And um, yeah, yeah, it was great. That's, this is why we need more um, experts and STEM individuals in our political leadership, for sure, because she just, she just was amazing. Um, and then my last one is bees. <laughs> So Bethann Bruninga Sokolar, who is a booktuber here, uh, did a video yesterday, I think, on her job as a bee scientist. And it was really, really cool. I'm totally interested in that. Um, I, however, would also, if that's a topic you're interested in, link you back to the Ologies podcast with Ali Ward, who's a science communicator. And Ologies interviews specialists in, in scientific um areas and um, that's why it's ologies it's like biology etc they're all the all the specialized fields of science and so she she finds these specialists ologists in these fields including there was an episode on bees and so i'm going to link that podcast episode down and below as well because i i remember listening to it and loving it so that's it for my week i hope you had a great week and hopefully um everybody is starting to get some spring my weather will not make up its mind. We're going to get down below freezing again tonight. And I have seen people out planting their gardens, which hopefully they don't die. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been very, very windy and rainy earlier this week. And now it's just windy and sunny and cold. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to get to spring eventually, I hope. Um, at least it's not summer yet. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. It is the monthly Stitch and Bitch live stream on Kalinati's channel. I've completed two more rows, but not fast enough to get this done for a birthday present. So it needs probably at least five more rows before it will be large enough to be a shawl, sadly. I'm having a very serious mouse hunt. Do you like really getting it under that blanket? I think you got it. Whoa! Where'd it go? <laughs> the sunshine has returned and you might not be able to tell there's a burb outside the window. I dumped out the toy bucket, so it's just a like a Rubbermaid container that lays on its sides that I fill with toys. I dumped out all the toys. The cats are usually very good about getting them out themselves, but apparently it's very exciting. Cinnamon is trying to find something to eat from there. There is definitely nothing edible in there. And Rue has gone back under his cat tent. <laughs> don't attack the passersby, Rue. Please don't. That's not very nice. 
Hi, are you purring? What a sweetie. You are large. Hello, look at your curly tail. I have become the sort of author who is like legitimately going, I should make the list this time. <laughs> which is which is awful. Please push me down the stairs. I, I've become the thing that they've always, you know, I, I've always feared I would become. It's just this my well, Of course, I met the New York Times list. So I, why wouldn't I make the New York Times list? Push. <laughs> so, but. So I got back from the Scalzi event. Everyone was actually starving after me being away for three whole hours. So I fed them them out. Cinnamon was desperate to go out and they they beat me into bed. <laughs> Everyone was so exhausted from my being out and about and not here. It was really stressful.